Welcome to the IT free training video on the DNS troubleshooting tool NS Lookup. This is a great tool for querying and testing DNS resolution and thus troubleshooting DNS related problems. In this video, I will look at NS Lookup for Windows. However, NS Lookup is also available in Linux. I will now change to my Windows 8.1 computer and get started. From my Windows 8.1 desktop, I will right-click on the Start icon and, from the menu, select the option for Command Prompt. From the Command Prompt, I will enter in nslookup followed by google.com. This will cause nslookup to contact the DNS server that is configured locally on this computer and display all the DNS records for google.com. The DNS server that this client is using is the domain controller NYDC1. Before I started this demo, I cleared the cache on the DNS server to prove a point. At present, you cannot see anything unusual about the DNS records that were returned, except maybe that there are a few of them. If I run the command again, this time notice the output is the same except one line has been added. Notice the line non-authority answer has been added. This indicates that the response has come from a non-authoritative source, most likely from a DNS cache. Let's have a closer look at what has happened. What has happened is this. The network has asked a local DNS server to resolve the DNS name google.com. The DNS server will first look in its cache to see if it has the DNS records for google.com. Before I started this video, I made a point of clearing the cache of the DNS server so google.com would not be in there. Since the DNS server does not know the answer, it will contact an authoritative DNS server for Google on the Internet. The DNS records for google.com will be transferred from the authoritative DNS server to the workstation and a copy of the DNS records will be stored in the cache of the DNS server. In this particular case, NSLOOKUP will report these DNS records as coming from an authoritative server. This is because the DNS records essentially came from an authoritative DNS server even though they had to pass through another DNS server in order to get to the workstation. When NSLOOKUP was run the second time, this time the DNS server had the DNS records in its cache, so it transferred the copy to the workstation. It did not need to contact the authoritative server as it had the DNS records in its cache. This is also why, on the second run, it had the extra line in the output, indicating the DNS records did not come from an authoritative source. In this case, a local server with DNS installed on it is performing the resolving process. If the server was instead configured to forward DNS requests to the ISP's DNS server or a public DNS server, there is a good chance these records have already been resolved and are in the ISP's DNS cache. For this reason, when using NSLOOKUP, make sure that you are aware that when you see a non-authoritative answer, this is essentially a cached copy of the original DNS record. For this reason, the DNS record may not be up to date. It is important when troubleshooting DNS related problems to pick up little clues like these as to where the resolution problems are occurring. If I now go back to the command prompt and this time run NS lookup with no parameters, notice that this time the prompt changes and I go to an interactive mode of NS lookup. In this mode, I can run multiple commands one after the other. If I enter in itfreetraining.local by itself and press enter, I get four DNS records. These are the four name server records for the domain name itfreetraining.local. To see all the DNS records in itfreetraining.local, I will run the command ls followed by itfreetraining.local. Notice that when I run the command, I get an error message saying query refused. NSLOOKUP is attempting to perform a zone transfer which is not configured in the security of the zone. To configure zone transfers, 
I will open Server Manager from the Quick Launch bar and then run DNS from under the Tools menu. Once DNS Manager is opened, I will expand down through the Forward Lookup Zones until I reach the zone itfreetraining.local. In order to configure the zone transfer settings, I will right click on the zone and select Properties from the menu. Once the properties are open, I next need to select the tab Zone Transfers. By default, zone transfers are not enabled. To allow them, it is just a matter of ticking the tick box Allow Zone Transfers. The default option is to allow zone transfers to any server. This is not the best security as it means that anyone with access to the DNS servers can obtain all the DNS records for the domain. In this case, I will select the option only to the following servers. Once selected, I will next press Edit and then add the IP address for my workstation. Once the IP address of my workstation has been added, I can close the properties for the zone and DNS Manager. Once closed, I will go back to the command prompt and run the command lsitfreetraining.local again. Notice this time there are quite a few DNS records listed. If you want to look for particular DNS records only, you can add switches to the command line. For example, if I add minus "-a", to the command and run it again, this time notice that the only DNS record that is listed is the CNAME record. If you have a particular type of DNS record in mind, you can list it with the minus "-t", switch, followed by the record type. In this case, I will add NS for the name server records, and this will show me only the name server records in the zone. NS lookup also supports the set command, which acts as a kind of filter. For example, if I enter in set type equals NS, this will configure NS lookup to only show name server records. Notice that once I run the set command, and then enter in itfreetraining.local. This time, only the name server records will be displayed. You could also change this to do mail exchanger, A records, or pointer records. If you want all possible information from the zone, you can add the minus D switch. This will display all the DNS records in that zone. In this case, I have used the greater than sign followed by a file name. What this will do is redirect the output to a file. Once the command has run, I will open Windows Explorer, navigate to the C drive, and open the file in Notepad. You can see when I scroll through the file how much information was obtained from the zone file and saved to this file. I will now close Notepad and from NS Lookup, I will run the command server followed by the IP address of Google's public DNS server. So far, NS Lookup has been using the locally configured DNS server on this computer, which has been NYDC1. The server command allows you to change which DNS server it will use. You can now see how useful this would be for troubleshooting, as it allows you to test multiple DNS servers to see if they are giving you the same results. If I enter in the address www.google.com and then run it, notice that I obtain the name server record for that zone. Remember that I used the set command earlier, so I need to run it again if I want to see different DNS records. To see all the DNS records available, I will run set equals all. Notice that when I run www.google.com a second time. This time I will get all the A records. Even though I have used the set command to set it to all records, the default for this command is to show the A records. If you use the set command, be mindful of how it changes the output from other commands and what the default output of these commands is. There are a lot of commands in NS Lookup. If you ever need more information, Enter in a question mark and this will display the built-in help. This will tell you all the commands that are available 
and also give you some information on how to use them. Well, that's it for the NS Lookup Tool. I hope you found this video useful, and I look forward to seeing you in the other free videos from us. All of our videos are free and available on YouTube and our webpage. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.